Good morning. Drumming. That's one of the things we just did today. My name is Marty Wiebe, and drumming, that we just did, is one form of communication. Talking to you like I am doing right now is another form of communication. My speech is going to be about how communication is changing and how the media is changing and how we, as communicators, have got to become better and more acquainted with the new modes of, of communication and some of the new rules that we're going to have to learn. There are two forms, forms of, main forms of communication, verbal, which is what I'm doing right now, and nonverbal, like our drums. They're nonverbal. Music is nonverbal. When I smile at you, it's nonverbal. So verbal and nonverbal go hand in hand, and it's really, really important that we use both verbal and nonverbal communication when we are doing presentations. We live in a shrinking world. When I grew up back in the Stone Ages, face-to-face -face was the normal type of communication that we did. We met somebody, we talked to them face-to-face. -face. We sat down and we wrote a letter and we sent them, which is now considered by snail mail. We had newspapers and televisions, and probably in the 70s when I was just graduating from high school, we did phone conferencing, which was a really, really big deal. Because up to that point, our world was just what was around us. We weren't global at this point. Computers were just getting developed. Uh, my first computer was a Commodore 64, and we had little five and a half inch floppy disks that we used. But there was no internet. Bill Gates was still in the baby stage of developing Microsoft. But today we've got tons and tons of communication. A lot of us have Facebook accounts. We can now communicate with people around the world. We have a classmate in here, his name is CJ, he lives in Africa. And we can actually communicate with him after he gets back to Africa. We can also use Skype. We have cell phones. When I was growing up, we were just still using landlines and long distance charges applied, which don't do anymore. Now cell phones, we can talk internationally. We couldn't even talk internationally on our landlines many, many years ago. We now have something called teleconferencing. In other words, you can be sitting here in this classroom studying, and someone from Australia could be in the same classroom with you, and you could be discussing things and learning together. Our communicating world is shrinking. But with new communications, we also have to realize that there are cultural differences. We have to learn whether it is proper to speak or not to speak. In this culture, speaking is fine. In Asian cultures, you need to listen first. In our culture, we're more individualism. In other words, if you make a mistake, you're responsible for it. But on the other hand, if you live in a collective culture, such as our Asian counterparts, their thinking is different. They work as a group. If you make a mistake, the whole group makes a mistake. So it's really important that we learn that cultural differences can make the difference between communication skills that you're learning are going to be effective or not. You have to realize that just because we're allowed to speak in our culture doesn't necessarily mean that you can speak in another. Remember, once the words are out there, you can't go, stop, come back. They're out there for the whole world. And it isn't just our little world or the neighborhood that I grew up in. It's the world. We're talking Sweden, Australia, the Congo, South America. Those words that you spoke that you thought were just for you to hear are no longer your words. They're out there. You can't say, come back, I made a mistake. Before you press that send button on your Facebook page or before you press any send button or even talk in teleconferencing, you have to make sure that what you're saying is not going to be offensive to someone else. Again, once it's said, there are no do-overs. And what you can say may be very offensive to someone else. So again, in our culture, in our communication, those are the things that we have to remember. There are no do-overs. There are no stop, come back moments. And in conclusion, 
we have different forms of communication. It isn't just me talking to you face to face. It's Facebook. It's Skype. It's mass media. There are different platforms. We've got Facebook. I've got a Juno account. I can Skype. I can talk to someone on a cell phone. I can email them on my computer. Those weren't available several years ago, and I suspect as time progresses that our platforms are going to be changing. Technology is going to allow us to even further communicate with those people that we were unable to do so even 10 years ago. We live in a shrinking world. And because the world is shrinking, it is important to realize that what we here in the United States may think is normal, someone in Asia may find very offensive. So the bottom line is communication is really important, but it's also an awareness. It's a challenge to each student every day that when we learn to communicate, we communicate on a level that is both effective and not offensive. And with that, I thank you.